Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, May 28th. Okay, so today we have the moon in Aquarius energy all day. That's definitely going to help us out to emotionally detach so that we can act as the observer and see ourselves, our lives, our issues, our problems from a bigger, broader perspective. That's going to help us kind of see the inner workings of how everything's all connected, what it is that we have to focus on removing, what we have to focus on building. And again, seeing some epiphanies pop off, especially when we take a different perspective and we have these aha moments and epiphanies, how that changes the way that we feel about things that have already come to pass, things that are currently happening, and of course, things that we are hoping to happen, again, altering and adjusting the path, the plan, the strategy with each and every epiphany that is helping us to see the greater, grander potential of where it is that we would like to go from here. So there are seven different aspects taking place here today. Six of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Aquarius energy going to trine beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who is in Gemini energy. Again, we're attempting to get our heart and our head on the same page, but we're also looking to explore different options, if you will. We may have identified what isn't making us happy, what isn't encouraging or supporting us, what isn't making us feel safe and secure and stable. But now we have to move out into the world and figure out what does. The moon interacting with Venus in this way is a gentle nudge in the right direction. We are definitely seeing more options and opportunities available to us now. And with that, again, we're emotionally detached. We're removed from being emotionally triggered and activated from contemplating the different options, the different variables that we're trying to percolate on in our inner realm to see how it is that we're actually thinking and feeling about it. Because the moon in Aquarius energy offers us the observer type of mentality, we're able to kind of see where it is that we're at currently with our emotional and mental disposition, the time, the energy, Energy, the space that is keeping them divided and where we have the opportunity to get them more in alignment. Now, the one aspect that is taking place here today that doesn't involve the moon is actually a pretty special one. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, wisdom. Now in this Gemini energy, again, attempting to kind of blend our intuition with our intellect, our wisdom with our knowledge, really open up and expand our mental plane, our plans, our strategy, our ability to see what it is that we have to build what we have to create what we have to learn from here jupiter is making a very positive interaction with saturn the lord of karma ruling over roles responsibilities systems structures foundations willpower discipline who's been in this pisces energy for a bit now trying to deconstruct the old vision the old dreams the old belief system the old systems and structures that are not supporting who it is that we currently are who it is that we're desiring to become again really kind of eliminating through the processing of what needs to stay what needs to go what belonged to the old version of self what belongs to the new version of self we are eliminating certain aspects, certain structures in order to actually gain a lot more perspective on what we want to do, what we want to pursue, what we want to build, what we're being called to actually make a part of this new identity, of this new realm, of this new reality. So Jupiter's expansion. Saturn is restriction. So uh, back in 2021, we had Jupiter and Saturn very close together. They were actually in, well, they were, they started off in the Capricorn energy. That's what kind of created uh, this whole 2020 situation, the Great Awakening, if you will. There was a great conjunction in that Capricorn energy with multitude of planets. And then in 2021, we had Jupiter and Saturn kind of travel through the Aquarius energy, doing this back and forth, this ebb and flow. And at that particular point in time, I kind of use the analogy of an accordion to kind of give the effect of what we're doing here. So when you pull that accordion 
oat all the way to its maximum, that is Jupiter, great expansion. And then when you compress that accordion and you bring it into its smallest size, that is Saturn. So it's a little bit of a one step forward, two steps back type of deal here. But this is actually a very positive interaction. It's a long lasting aspect as well. And it's really helping us to tap into a little bit of cleverness, a little bit of ingenuity if you will, a little bit of just being a, a, a genius, even if it's for a moment and understanding how it is that we actually have to put energy and effort into bringing these new goals, these new visions, these new dreams into life. So this is like an aha moment of seeing, okay, so I definitely know that I want to be going in this direction. Not really sure what's going to happen in between the starting point and the ending point, but I know I want to go this way. We are having a little bit of a glimmer, if you will, with Jupiter in Gemini energy, the expansion of the mental plane, the expansion of this cleverness. We are seeing a greater, grander opportunity to actually take action and make a move. Now, is it going to be a big one? Probably not, because again, Saturn takes a baby step while Jupiter wants to take a great big leap in a brand new direction, we have to kind of meet a compromise. So whatever step we're taking in a new direction or leaning towards a certain decision point or leaning towards a certain goal, we're actually going to make a solid step forward. This isn't just a baby step. This isn't a great big leap that we're going to have to kind of backtrack and backpedal on later. This is actually a solid action. And it's very exciting because it's giving us this I'm going to say sense of being in the right place at the right time. Like, wow, this was actually a really easy move to make. This was an easy step to make. And it's going to kind of surprise us a little bit because we're kind of in a state where we're always kind of waiting for the ball to drop or for something to get messed up at this particular point in time. But it's actually free flowing. It's moving with a little bit of ease here. And it's giving us a little bit of a confidence boost, a little bit of optimism, if you will, that we're on the right path. We're moving in the right direction. We may not know when the opportunity to take another huge progressive leap forward is actually going to take place. But right now, there's actually some evidence of progress. And that is exactly what we've been lacking for a very long amount of time. And that is exactly what we need right now to reassure ourselves that we are making moves. We are seeing progress. We are coming up with aha moments. We are seeing new options and opportunities for growth. So this is a beautiful interaction that's going to be around for a while because they are two both very slow moving planets. They're going to stay kind of within orb of this aspect for at least a couple of weeks. And of course, you know, fast forward, we do have Saturn going retrograde here shortly. And of course, that will make another interaction uh, with Jupiter. But right now, we're just kind of moving forward one solid step in a brand new path, brand new direction, and we're feeling pretty good about it. So the moon is then going to trine the sun. So the moon in Aquarius, the sun in Gemini, both our air energies were all up in the headspace, all up in the mental plane. And anytime that the moon and the sun come together, there's an aha moment of what it is that we need, what we want, what we desire, what we should be doing, if you will. It's an emotional activation where it's like, oh, I get it. Here's an idea. Here's an option. Here's what we could try. Here's what we can experiment in order to create a different result. Again, the Aquarius energy wants us to constantly be bettering ourselves and improving ourselves and our lives and breaking away from the heaviness, the weight that we already are very well aware of that is in existence in our lives. And the Gemini energy is giving us those options, giving us information, giving us an opportunity to kind of experiment and explore. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's in his rulership in Aries energy, thus the underlying aggression, the underlying frustration, the urgency, the impulsivity that is just a hard horse to tame 
at this particular point. We actually love this interaction because it means that emotionally speaking, being in this Aquarius energy, we're thinking futuristically. We're thinking about the path, the plan, the strategy and moving forward. Mars, of course, on board, ready to take action and make moves anytime that we're given the opportunity to do so, especially in a path, in a direction that cultivates more excitement, more inspiration, more motivation to actually creating a new version of self and therefore a new version of reality that is more in alignment with this new want, need, and desire that the new version of self has. The moon then makes a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, also in this Aries energy. This is a glow up. This is a boss up. This is a reassurance. This is a certainty, especially in this new version of self, that we're feeling capable. We're feeling ready. We're feeling prepared. We're feeling like we have what it takes to do what needs to be done. And we haven't felt like that in a very long time. This is very inspiring, very motivating. We're definitely going to continue to pursue the path moving forward. The moon is then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with the north node in Aries energy. So again, now we're thinking futuristically, but we're also seeing the opportunities to have power and control over our circumstances in this present moment to actually align us with the greater, grander vision that we're percolating on, that we're trying to manifest. This is highly suggestive that we are seeing a lot of growth, not only within ourselves, but within, let's call it the plan that we're putting into play. This is indicative that we're feeling again empowered through the process of healing those particular wounds the aspects of the old version of self that didn't have us feeling so safe and secure so well equipped well prepared to actually move forward this is a beautiful energy for us to start kind of reassuring ourselves that things are going to be okay that they're going to get better that we're going to see a forward movement and we're definitely again building in our confidence building in this new version of self to actually get us there, to actually see these particular plans through. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Aquarius energy, semi-squaring. So a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict with Neptune and his place of power in this Pisces energy. So this is our spirituality. This is our higher self. This is our soul contract. This is our dreams, our imagination, our creativity. There's a blockage here. Why is that, you may ask? Well, a lot of it is because, A, the moon in Aquarius energy has us emotionally detached, so that makes it hard for us to kind of fine-tune our higher self and tap in to our intuition, and B, the Aquarius energy is more intellectual than intuitive or spiritual, and so we have a little bit of a conflict here because there is a part of us that is very dependent on information and details and matter of facts and what's in our face versus the Neptune and Pisces energy, which is all about hope and faith and all the things that you can't see. And so we, again, we're in Gemini season, we're having to strike a balance between using our intellect, using our intuition, understanding what is right in front of our face as far as information, details, and knowledge goes, and what is missing that we still have hopes and wishes is going to manifest for us. So again, it may not feel good. There may be a division within self, but we're in Gemini season, so that is to be expected. But either way, this tension, this conflict is going to illuminate for us where it is that we have to meet ourselves in the middle, blending our intellect with our intuition, understanding the greater, grander picture of what currently is and the greater, grander picture of what it is that we would like it to be.